The world is closely watching how much Tuesday's inter-Korean talks will contribute to resolving the heightened tensions on the Korean Peninsula. Now, for an expert's perspective on what we can expect Tuesday, we're now joined by Dr. Pong Young-sik, a researcher at the Yonsei Institute for North Korean Studies. Thank you so much, Dr. Bong, for coming in today. Now, I want to start off with a question that many across the world would be curious about. South Korea's progressive president, Moon Jae-in, has been openly eager to resume inter-Korean dialogue despite North Korea's almost routine provocations. But his kind gesture was only met with North Korea's indifference. Why does North Korean leader Kim Jong-un want to talk now? Uh, the simple answer is that South Korea has become quite useful to North Korean regime. Uh, it is true that uh, not only the current uh, presidency of Moon Jae-in of South Korea, uh, pre previous uh, governments have been um, dismissed by North Korean regime as an illegitimate uh, you know, government, just a puppet of the United States in terms of the, uh, settling important issues on the Korean Peninsula. So there has not been any significant progress in terms of inter-Korean relations uh, since the Nomian presidency in early 2000. Uh, then why suddenly uh, North Korea uh, has made a 180-degree turnaround and court, you know, dialogues and uh, cooperation with South Korea? Because South Korea has gained the uh, utility uh, in the eyes of North Korea. There are several reasons uh, that enhance the utility of South Korea uh, to North Korea. One is that the uh, sanctions imposed by the, uh, the uh, United Nations Security Councils uh, in response to North Korea's uh, missile test and nuclear test uh, have been really biting North Korea. So the pains and sufferings of uh, uh, economic sanctions are really felt really hard uh, by North Koreans. So North Korean regime needs to uh, find some ways to uh, mitigate the harshness of international uh, economic sanctions and to find alternative uh, potential source of uh, financial revenues to uh, support its uh, economy. And second is that uh, it is very useful for North Korea to uh, find some ways to drive a wedge between Washington and Seoul so that uh, the international uh, effort to coordinate uh, pr push, uh, pr pressure North Korea uh, to the corner uh, can be lessened. Um, and uh, South Korean government uh, made it really clear that uh, it is urgent uh, uh, need uh, to uh, host the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games uh, peacefully uh, without any uh, uh, provocations uh, by North Korea. Uh, and the, uh, the probability of the accidental war on the Korean Peninsula uh, in the midst of the uh, exchange of the very uh, belligerent wars uh, between uh, Pyongyang and uh, Washington uh, would make uh, South Korea as the uh, biggest victim. So in this situation, if North Korea extends olive branch, then uh, North Korean leadership would expect the South Korean government would eagerly accept so timing is right. And the third reason is that uh, North Korea has made a lot of progress in terms of testing uh, its uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles and nuclear tests. So it is time for Kim Jong-un regimes to um, you know, relax and stretch and uh, just uh, wait for the um, you know, uh, international responses and uh, think of the next uh, gambits. So with or without uh, change of the security circumstances or the uh, bold proposals by the Moon Jae-in government, uh, including the, uh, the North Korea restraining herself from pro provocation uh, during the Pyeongchang Olympic Games, then uh, in return, U.S. and South Korea would postpone uh, the annual joint military exercise. North Korea might have, might have extended the olive branch nonetheless because it's time for North Korea to calm down and think of its uh, next stage of the long-term uh, strategy. So I guess the sanctions have really worked this time and North Korea, like many had expected, has quite a lot to gain from Tuesday's meeting. Uh, now, U.S. President Trump has said that America supports President Moon 100 percent and his uh, administration's officials have also said that they're not opposed to the idea of the two Koreas coming together and holding talks. Uh, but quite many are concerned that uh, Tuesday's talks will be steered in the direction that is quite opposite from America's maximum pressure North Korea policy. What do you think is Washington's real stance on this beneath the surface? Wouldn't they be a little suspicious about that too? Um, yeah, my, I do not uh, rule out the possibility that the Washington might be really concerned if the inter-Korean talk 
uh, to be held tomorrow might uh, be made in a way that would deflate uh, the uh, pressure uh, created by the very harsh and systemic economic sanctions uh, through a series of the UN Security Council uh, resolutions. But uh, we have to, you know, wait until uh, both sides meet and actually exchange their opinions on a wide range of the uh, issues. South Korea has not crossed the red line, so to speak. South Korea has not done anything uh, that actually uh, lessened the impact of economic sanctions that are already in place. So the concern is about is a potential uh, deviation of South Korea from the concerted effort to put maximum pressure on North Korea. So it is too early to uh, actually criticize the Moon Jae-in government for having actually violated uh, the red line. Having said that, uh, Washington has all along, uh, whether it's a Republican presidency or a Democratic presidency, uh, wholeheartedly supported inter-Korean dialogue. Uh, if the uh, inter-Korean cooperation dialogue would definitely help reducing the tension across the DMZ. So uh, Trump administration's uh, uh, welcoming message for uh, tomorrow's inter-Korean high-level government-to-government meeting is not just uh, uh, you know, face value, but it's a reiteration of a long-standing official position of the U.S. government, bipartisan position. And um, it is time for Trump administration to see uh, whether North Korea has any genuine intention whatsoever to engage in meaningful negotiation and dialogue on nuclear missile issues. So far, North Korea flatly rejected to uh, take the, uh, the uh, invitation by Washington to come to the negotiation table. So why not just uh, give a, uh, South Korea a chance to uh, be, work as an interlocutor between Pyongyang and Washington to start any kind of dialogue that has a potential to be developed to uh, a higher level of dialogues, specifically focused on the, uh, the nuclear missile issues lying between Washington and Pyongyang. I know you've mentioned that the Moon administration hasn't done anything to weaken the existing sanctions, but just by holding, resuming the inter-Korean dialogue, do you think that would have any impact, some kind of an impact on the global community's efforts to ramp up pressure against the North Korean regime? Uh, I don't think so, because as I said, that South Korea has not done anything in material terms to lessen the effectiveness of sanction. We have not studied uh, the inter-Korean uh, dialogue yet. That's going to be held uh, tomorrow. And uh, uh, the Minister of Unification, uh, Mr. Jo myung -yun, uh, clearly said that the likely agendas on the table are uh, focused on the successful hosting of the PyeongChang Olympic Games and how to accommodate the North Korean uh, participation, the athletes and their delegations uh, to PyeongChang Olympic Games and uh, other issues, but they are uh, mainly on the front of the inter-Korean uh, cooperation, including the, some humanitarian issues. So nu nuclear and missile issues are not really on the agenda at all. Uh, that uh, should be uh, waited until uh, both Korean governments uh, need to overcome the first step. Now, you've briefly mentioned about this uh, in your previous answer as well, but driving a wedge between South Korea and the U.S., tying up the U.S. through talks with South Korea. We hear these phrases every time North Korea halts its provocations and shows a friendly gesture towards the South. Do you think that is also, that is one of the main objectives for Pyongyang this time? I think so. I mean, uh, it, South Korea, United States, and Japan have been in this situation many times before. And uh, North Korea did not hide its uh, intention, strategic goal to drive a wedge between um, United States and its uh, security partners in terms of uh, putting pressure on North Korea so that North Korea would abandon its ambition to become the uh, de facto nuclear power state. Having said that, it is time for U.S. and its uh, security partners uh, to consider giving a dialogue a chance, any type of dialogue, because um, uh, during the eight years of Obama administration, in the name of the policy of the strategic patience, uh, the United States did not really engage in meaningful dialogue with North Korea unless North Korea uh, first demonstrated a genuine intention on the denuclearization. What w have we achieved? North Korea has furthered its uh, ICBM, the nuclear weapon capability. 
So that is the, uh, the reason why Trump administration uh, decided on the policy of maximum pressure and maximum engagement. But maximum pressure is only as effective as uh, maximum engagement is also effective. Th these are two sides of the same coin. So you have to not only build uh, uh, maximum pressure so that the sticks will be as big and powerful as a baseball bat, not just a toothpick, and the uh, maximum engagement that North Korea has been foregoing uh, by refusing to talk to Washington on uh, the terms of denuclearization is looming larger and larger for North Korea as the pains of the economic sanctions uh, continues to increase. So uh, this is a um, kind of trap that uh, Washington, Seoul, and Tokyo are all aware that it is a trap. But uh, South Korean government uh, decided to walk into the trap nonetheless for the sake of, first, at least temporarily halting the probability of the accidental war on the Korean Peninsula during the Olympic game period. That's a good short-term gain. And in the long term, uh, it creates a momentum, kind of atmosphere more uh, uh, conducive to uh, dialogue uh, between North Korea and the United States. So it, the term is that uh, you do not give up too much in order to uh, gain short-term interest, but um, you create this uh, atmosphere favorable uh, for talks and negotiations. So uh, the inter-Korean relations, um, if it continues to improve, will lead to a meaningful dialogue taking place between Washington and Pyongyang. So I guess Tuesday's talks will be very meaningful in that sense. Uh, now let's talk more about the uh, actual topics, the possible topics of Tuesday's meeting. Uh, now the official agenda uh, here is the, 20, the cooperation between the two Koreas on the uh, upcoming 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Games and uh, ways to improve inter-Korean relations. What specific agenda items do you think will be brought up at the table? Well, um, we need to take the, uh, the official statements as official. Uh, that the agenda uh, for the talk will be focused on uh, the Pyeongchang Olympic Games. Uh, because time is running out, uh, the talk will be held on the 9th of January, and the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games begins on uh, 20 days after. So time is not really much left uh, for both Koreas. Uh, and this is just the first uh, uh, bite uh, in the apple uh, for both Koreas. So um, too much expectation uh, should be avoided. And the uh, uh, Minister of the Unification, Cho myung uh, in his answer to the Korean reporters that uh, Pyeongchang Olympic Games and other uh, inter-Korean issues, humanitarian issues, can be on the table. So I would expect that uh, both sides would uh, uh, discuss potential resumption of the uh, meetings between separate families, uh, between the two Koreas, uh, to, as a symbol of uh, both Korea's commitment to improving the relations, even in gradual you know, uh, pace. And this is a very good, important humanitarian issue, especially for uh, South Korean people, because there are uh, 130,000 registered uh, members of separate families in South Korea alone. But uh, there was only one uh, meeting uh, between separate families, only 100 uh, from right. each side, right. in 2014, the aftermath of the North Korea's provocation uh, with the wooden box and landmine. And every year, about 3,800 uh, separate family members die of a natural cause. Uh, so, and the uh, over 84 uh, point percent of the uh, surviving uh, separate family members are uh, 70s or older. So, if the remaining members can meet the other family in North Korea at least once, at least once, at least 7,200 members must meet every year. But North Korea has refused the, the previous Nomuyon government's proposal to make it a regular event so that more separate family members would uh, uh, you know, achieve their hope uh, to see their uh, other family members in the North and uh, support verifying the life and death of their, their family members and uh, facilitate exchange of personal letters. But North Korea has refused to uh, accept all these three major you know, uh, requests by the previous uh, South Korean government. So it is a good litmus test for South Korean government how genuine the Kim Jong-un leadership of North Korea is in advancing uh, the, uh, the uh, currently frozen inter-Korean uh, relationship. 
All right, Dr. Wong, I have a lot more questions on my list, but I'm already, I'm afraid that's already, uh, we only have this much time for you. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing your insights with us today. You're welcome.